Moodle workshops are a great way to increase collaboration in your classroom, and they're relatively easy to set up. Make sure that editing is on, and then scroll to the part of your site that you'd like to add this new workshop. Select Add an Activity and choose Workshop from the bottom. You'll be brought directly into the Workshop Setup phase. You'll start by giving your workshop a name. The introduction is where you'll let the students know about the activity. You now have a couple of options. The two that I like to select are use peer review so that the students will have the ability to grade each other's papers and I also like them to grade their own paper. These are user preferences and you can select or deselect them at your convenience. You'll note that in the grading settings the defaults are 80 and 20. What this means is that 80 percent of the students grade will be based upon how they respond to the questions that we're about to right in below, and 20% of their grade comes from whether or not they successfully completed the grading on their peers' papers. You can again um, set these numbers accordingly. Instructions for submission is where you'll paste, uh, in this case, I'm um, going to paste in the actual response, or of course you could type in the response to the questions. So these are the, this is where you would put the questions that you want the students to answer. Again, I've pre-selected one, and I'm going to paste it in now. And this is an American government FRQ. In fact, there are two questions. So question one with parts A and B, excuse me, A, B, and C, and a question two with an A and a B. So this is essentially what I'm going to ask the students to respond to. Moving down, you see assessment settings and it asks for your instructions for assessment. I'm going to provide my students with a rubric from which to grade the FRQs above. So I will simply type grade based on given rubric. You could be more detailed in this section if you choose to do so. Further down the page you see the same restrictions and completion settings that you have on uh, virtually all of your Moodle activities. I'm going to leave those alone for right now and choose Save and Display. You can see that I'm now in the setup phase, which is automatically highlighted for me. And there are four additional phases, Submission, Assessment, Grading and Evaluation, and Closed. Now, you'll note that in the setup phase, I've set the workshop introduction and I've provided instructions. I have not edited the assessment form. This is where you can either do this now or you can return after students have submitted their work and you can put in the criteria for grading the questions that you set up earlier. Notice that right now in the setup phase the introduction is displayed. When I'm ready for students to respond you'll switch to the submission phase And you'll see that now when the students return to this workshop, they'll see the questions that I'd like for them to respond to and a submit button. When they're ready or at a designated time that you've set, you'll allow the students access to this. They can read and respond to each of these, these questions. And all I have to do is click that submit button scroll back down and they'll have a place to put their submission. They can type any title they'd like. I usually ask them to keep it uniform so I'll give them a title, in this case Unit 1 FRQ. And I'm simply going to type my responses and save changes. And 
from a student perspective, that's all they would need to do. Go through, answer the questions, hit save responses, and here I can see a summary of my work. Very brief. It says exactly when I submitted it, and I'm ready to move into the next phase. From this point, you can always click using the breadcrumb menu back to the workshop title. I named mine Sample Workshop. This will always bring you back to the five phases. You'll notice that it is reminding me that I skipped the edit assessment form. At this point, assuming all students had responded to the prompt and submitted their work, before I switch to the assessment phase, I have a couple of things I need to do. First, unless I'm providing them a paper rubric, I really need to go in and edit this assessment form. And I highly recommend that you keep your assessment forms within Moodle. It makes the process easier for the students for grading, and it keeps those forms from leaking out. So you'll notice that when I get into this screen to set up the rubric, I have different aspects, aspect one, aspect two, aspect three, and I can add more if I choose to do so. This is basically where I would put the actual responses that I'm looking for. So in this case, I would say question one, letter A, I'm looking for this response. Question B, this is the response I'm looking for, and so forth. Now, I need to determine at this point in time how many points I want to give to each question. So let's suppose that this was an easy question. I might change this and say, okay, question one um, is only worth five points. Question two, on the other hand, might be more in-depth, and I might assign this question 20 points. Again, it's up to you completely as to how many points you want to assign. So at this point, the assignment is worth a total of 25 points. I could have, of course, broken each one of these up, which I often do in my classes. So I'll do question 1A, and I'll have the response that I'm looking for under aspect 1. Aspect 2 would be question 1B. Aspect 3 is question 1C, and so forth. But it's completely up to you how you want to set this up. Again, you can always click blanks for two more aspects at the bottom and it'll give you additional aspects and you can add as many as you'd like. When you're all set you can either save and continue editing, save and close, or save and preview. I'm going to just click save and close. You'll see that I have now added an assessment form. The only thing that's left before I switch to the assessment phase is to allocate submissions and I do this by simply Clicking on this link, at the current moment, I only have two students enrolled in this course, but if this were a normal class, you would see a list of all of your students. You'll also notice that because only one individual, myself, has responded to this, um, I only have, uh, well, I have two options. I can choose from myself or the other individual enrolled in the class, uh, and then you can see I can also select whose paper to review. Now, because no one else has submitted a paper, my name's the only one that is shown here. If you want to avoid having to go through each individual student and in choosing reviewer and reviewee, you can simply scroll to, or rather move to random allocation. In here, you can just have Moodle do all the work for you. I like my students to grade a minimum of two students' papers. And I like to check add self-assessments, again, to require them to grade their own papers. Hit save changes. And you can see that, in this case, I don't have enough peers available. But again, under a normal circumstance, it would have automatically selected who was going to grade whose paper at this point. So at this point, I've completed everything in the setup phase. I've completed everything in the submission phase. I'm now ready for the students to assess each other's papers. I can now switch to the assessment phase. 
At this time, when students return to the workshop, they will see a number of papers that were automatically assigned to them. You can see that in my case, I only have a self-assessment because I didn't have any other students enrolled in the course who had submitted a Unit 1 pre-response question. At this point, you may be asking, uh, can the students see who wrote whose paper? And the answer to that is that by default, yes. Uh, Moodle is set up in a non-anonymous manner. In other words, Bobby will see that he is grading Timmy's paper and that Tina and Tracy are both grading his. You can change this if you do not want the students to know whose paper they're grading. Although I've found, in my experience, it really doesn't matter that much. Um, the students, while they may complain at first, uh, many of them actually like uh, to know who's giving the feedback. Again, it's completely up to you. If you decide you would like it to be anonymous, you can always go to the permissions. We'll do this briefly. And if you scroll down, you'll see you can set the permissions on virtually everything within this. And right here where you see view authors names, if you don't want students to be able to see the name of the person whose paper they're grading, you can click this X and it'll remove students from seeing that. They will simply see anonymous submission. And again, you can experiment with all kinds of settings in this uh, field if you would like. Very quickly, I'll show you what it's like to assess someone. When I click Assess, I'm now going to see the student's paper up top. I'll see each of the aspects and the responses that they were supposed to have, at which point I can choose a grade. You can see it's out of a maximum of five. Aspect two, I set at a maximum of 20. Suppose the student had points deducted. Let's suppose that they only got half the points. You can see that there's also a place to comment. So you could say letter B is incomplete. And this feedback will show up for the student who had completed this paper. Click Save and Close. You can see I have assessed my own paper. Again, this would have other students' papers. There would be self-assessment and peer assessment here had other students taken this. And if you look down here, you'll see that as a teacher, I get to see the grade received and the grades given. So I graded my own paper and I also received a grade of 60 and it averaged me to a 60, which in this case was the highest score I could get. When you're all done, you can switch to the grading and evaluation phase. Click Recalculate. And you can see that I received a 60 for a 60 out of 80 points for the submission and a 20 out of 20 for the assessment. And then what I do is I simply add these two columns and that becomes their grade. So this student would have received an 80 out of a total of 100 points. Again, 80 points total for the submission, 20 for the assessment, but this student only got half of the credit on the second question, bringing them down to a 60 plus 20 for a total of 80. And again, in a normal class situation, you would see a long list here with all of your students. You would see several names under each one of the individual students' names showing who graded their papers and whose papers they in turn graded. From this point, you can simply take these two grades, average them into one, and put them in progress book. And when you're ready for the students to see their grade in Moodle, you can close the activity. And now the next time that they move into this workshop, they'll see their scores updated in Moodle.